Welcome to the Lake Oroville update for October 2023. The current water level at Lake Oroville is 827 feet above mean sea level. That's a decrease of 26 feet 4 inches since September 1st. Before we review the latest Lake Oroville news and statistics, please take a moment to like this video and subscribe to my channel. I really value your support. Lake Oroville's water level is 72 feet below full pool and 186 feet above minimum power pool. As September drew to a close, so did the 2023 water year. Let's take a look at how Lake Oroville's water levels have fared throughout this time. Lake Oroville is California's second largest reservoir after Lake Shasta. It began the 2023 water year with a capacity of just over 35%, clocking in a water level of 696.6 .6 feet above mean sea level. The water level then declined almost 40 feet to reach its low point of the water year at 658 feet 5 inches on November 30th, 2022. The highest elevation of the water year was recorded on June 20th, when the reservoir reached full pool at just below 900 feet. The last time Lake Oroville hit the full pool mark was back in February of 2017, when the main spillway and emergency spillways were severely damaged. The water year concluded on September 30th with a water level of 833 feet 8 inches. That is a water level decline of 66 feet since the water year's peak elevation. There is no question the 2023 water year has been great for Lake Oroville. In fact, the water year has helped all of Northern California's reservoirs increase their storage levels well above where they were just one year ago. Now I want to run through a few more statistics about the current status of Lake Oroville, then I will take a look at the reservoir's inflows and outflows to see why the water level is now on the decline. The current water elevation of 827.6 feet is 57 feet above the 770 foot average water level for the state. The highest water level at Lake Oroville was recorded on February 11, 2017 at 902 and a half feet. The record low for the reservoir was set on September 30, 2021, when the level declined to just 628 and a half feet. When we look at previous year's water levels, we see the Lake Oroville Reservoir is 137 feet above the water level at this same time last year and almost 200 feet above the water level in 2021. Today's water level is 124 feet above the water level on this same date in the historic year of 2017. Again, that's the year the water level rose so high, it damaged Oroville Dam's main and emergency spillways. The current capacity of the Oroville Reservoir is 2,519,000 acre feet. That's just shy of 72% of the reservoir's capacity. The average capacity for this date is 1,871,000 acre feet. The record low for the reservoir was set on September 30th, 2021, when it declined to 787,000 acre feet. That's only 22.5% of full pool capacity. Full pool capacity is 3.5 million acre feet. Lake Oroville may be the second largest reservoir in California, but it's the largest reservoir in the California State Water Project, often referred to as the SWP. The SWP is a collection of state-owned and operated reservoirs, pipelines, canals, and hydroelectric power facilities that combined provide water to 27 million Californians. The fact that the State Water Project is owned by California sets it apart from another, similar project that moves water throughout California, the Central Valley Project, or CVP. The CVP is federally owned and operated by the U.S. Bureau of Reclamation. It includes dams like Shasta, Trinity, and Folsom. So Oroville Dam is managed by the State of California's Department of Water Resources. However, when it comes to managing outflows, the Department of Water Resources works hand-in-hand -hand with the U.S. Army Corps of Engineers, 
especially for flood control purposes. Let's take a look at Lake Oroville's inflows and outflows. This chart shows inflows to Lake Oroville for the 2023 water year. We can see a big increase in inflows in late December throughout January. This is from last year's atmospheric river events that brought a tremendous amount of rain to Oroville's watershed. Inflows then tapered off to between 5 and 7,000 cubic feet per second. But in March, inflows spiked again as the spring snowmelt and runoff, along with a few more rainstorms, began recharging Lake Oroville's water level. Now let's move over to the outflow chart. We can see outflows spiked significantly in early March. On March 10th, the Department of Water Resources began increasing water releases to the Feather River through the Hyatt Power Plant and from the main spillway. The releases over the main spillway continued until June 17th. Today, outflows have been reduced to around 4,000 cubic feet per second and flow only through the Hyatt Power Plant and the Thermolito After Bay outlets. There are several ways water is released from the Oroville Dam. These include the Hyatt Power Plant. This is the primary discharge point where the underground Hyatt pump generating plant uses water to generate hydroelectric power. Next up is the main or service spillway, which is used primarily during high water levels to control water flow and to prevent flooding. Next up is the low flow outlet. This is used for controlled releases from the dam during periods of lower water levels. These releases are typically used to maintain specific downstream conditions, such as water temperature. And then we have the emergency spillway. That serves as a backup when the water level at Lake Oroville rises beyond full pool, just like it did in 2017. And finally, there's the Thermolito After Bay Outlet, where water can be used to either raise or lower Lake Oroville's water level. These recent increased releases from Oroville Dam serve multiple purposes. First, they lower Lake Oroville's water levels to make room for future inflows. Second, increased water releases in the summer months are required to meet demand from the agriculture sector. Water releases are also needed to meet the increased demand for electricity during the summer months. There is also the occasional releases to meet river temperature requirements and to maintain river quality. Now, as we head into the winter season, the DWR will monitor weather systems and they may or may not increase water releases from Oroville Dam to make room for upcoming storms. There are plenty of good reasons why so much water has been released from Oroville this summer. The question is, did they release too much? One thing is for sure, I'll be here to keep an eye on the situation and I'll provide you with regular updates. As always, thank you for watching. Please consider subscribing. I really value your support.